Mount Barney was our little getaway and we'd climb the mountain from age 10 and 11. It's rugged peaks, it's volcanic soils, it's mountainscapes, it's rainforest, it's waterfalls, all tied up in, a, in this wonderful bioregion of, of intense flora and fauna. It's been since I've actually been living in the landscape that, that we've really, oh, the attachment has grown and now it's, it's, it's a part of who I am. And that's a beautiful thing, that's, it's a journey you go through as you, you leave the distractions of the city behind and, and start to live on a property and, and at the base of a mountain like this. My parents, when they first sold the property to us, walked around and said, look, this is glossy feed tree, this is an important spot. And at the first, oh, I didn't quite understand the whole significance. They don't like to fly, it, it takes a lot of energy and they're getting tiny seeds to get their food source. It's always in the left hand, it's always mouth first, into their left hand, ching, 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 and away they go. It's, it's quite amazing when you sit there and you watch them, they're just eating machines. It's brilliant. <laughs> Out of the 20 trees that are up there, there's only two or three they actually eat from. So the tree that the Glossies were feeding in today is an old tree. It's right on our property border, so we've got a, an issue with fire. We actively encourage our local landowners to, to let us know when they're burning so we can be around and help. And then we've planted around it other similar trees and trees that are compatible so that this builds out and creates a, a little system where they can survive together. We're doing what we can um, with the resources we have at hand and we're now seeing more glossies and people are now reporting more glossies to us than ever before. So we, we feel like there's a, there's a light at the end of the tunnel for the glossies in our little patch.